Britain's success in the Seven Years' War blinded the empire to the sense of separate identity that American colonists had started to develop. Conflicts between the English and the Americans grew during the Seven Years' War. The war promoted nationalism and the idea of a wider American community, strengthening American identity. The conduct of the British Army and the cruelty employed by its officers shocked the colonists. Commercial links and improved roads brought colonies into closer contact with each other. Newspapers provided a means of widely communicating news or intercolonial affairs and of expressing controversial opinions. Am Americans read the writings of radical Whigs who warned of the government conspiracy to qua squash liberty and institute tyranny. Only the constant vigilance of free people could protect liberty. Ideas collectively known as republicanism emerged that insisted that an independent people should control its own affairs. These ideas meshed well with the American colonial experience of property ownership, representative assemblies, and the struggle for royal authority. The British need for additional revenue tested American unity. The high cost of maintaining troops along the pro proclamation line and the expense of serving the large debt um, accumulated in the Seven Years' War led the British to pass new colonial taxes. The Sugar Act tightened enforcement of customs regulations. Opponents called for a boycott of British goods, in an idea which spread throughout the port cities. In early 1765, the British passed the Stamp Act, requiring tax stamps to be purchased for many items. Americans protested not only the expense, but the constitutional implications. The British claimed that the Parliament represented all citizens of the Empire through virtual representation. Americans asserted that only their own legislations, uh, legislatures could levy taxes. Nine colonies issued denunciations of the, attack, of the act, decla declaring no taxation without representation. In Massachusetts, opposition was led by upper- and middle-class men who successfully mobilized working-class Bostonians. What was intended as a peaceful protest rally turned into a violent attack on those associated with the tax. Most successful um, mo mobs successfully intimidated officials from selling the tax, and nine colonies met that met at the Stamp Act Congress, passing resolutions against Parliament's right to tax the colonies. A boycott of British goods led to an Act's appeal, repeal amid assertions of parliamentary supremacy. Despite the, the Royal Proclamation Line of 1763, most colonists were loyal British subjects. The interaction with British troops had shown colonists the cultural differences that they had from the in those who were born and lived in England. The Americans were really shocked by the lewd um, language of the soldiers and their violence and their, their use of profanity. And the officers that they came across were extremely harsh with, their, with British soldiers. And the American colonists were unused to this type of um, behavior. American volunteer militia were much less organized and disciplined than the British soldiers. British soldiers um, nicknamed the New, York, New Englanders Yankees, and this is where we get that nickname from. Uh, whereas the British soldier, um, the colonists called the British soldiers lo lobsters. This differences of um, in culture helped. The, to strengthen the colonial identity as being apart and different from the British. And it also helped to move them into a more, um, a mind more towards revolution. Colonists fighting with uh, the British, uh, sorry, colonists fighting with other colonists from different parts of the colonies also found that they had more in common with the other colonists than they did with the British troops. This also helped to create a sense of national identity. Intercontinental communication and trade increased about um, at an exponential four times during this uh, time period. Uh, weekly newspapers were one way that 
colonies interacted with one another or exchanged communications with one another. Uh, printers could get in quite a lot of trouble for printing things, but still, um, they were very bold in a lot of things that they printed. Um, they were not allowed to print anything anti-government or because they could be accused of seditious libel and they could be taken to court or punished um, with a uh, fine or even put in prison. Um, when they, Some scholars have looked at the numbers of readers that were uh, available at the time and it's thought that there were one in four or one-fourth of all the males uh, in the colonies were regular readers of newspapers. Newspaper writers began writing from the continental perspective, quote, unquote. And this was a new idea of having your own perspective that was not necessarily part of the British um, idea, but was unique to the colonies. Colonial writers also began to use the term, quote, American, as a common identity. These writers warned of this growing threat to liberty that the British were the British um, Parliament was causing because of their unchecked exercise of power by the King and Parliament. The feeling that governments should be limited or they would become tyrannical was something called republicanism. This is a vocabulary word. These sentiments were supported by the British another British faction called the Whigs. John Locke, a political theorist, argued that the authority of the ruler should be condi conditional rather than absolute, and that the people should have the right to select their own form of government or withdraw their support from a government that did not fulfill what it had agreed to do. So the best guarantee of good governance, then, was the broad distribution of power to the people. They should select and vote for their own leaders rather than having somebody um, put over them by, inherit by inheriting the title. The British government tried to raise revenues in the colonies by a series of taxes. This was because they had a huge cost in maintaining the standing army that they kept in um, North America, and the reason for this was not necessarily because they feared that the colonists were becoming too rebellious, but because of the threat of the Spanish colonies over towards the south and west, and also the French colonies uh, that, um, well, there were still French troops in the area. The Sugar Act was a, um, one of the first duties that was placed on sugar imports, and it was enforced. Unlike previous taxes that had been on the books for a long time but had never actually been enforced, so with this new enforcing of the law, it caused colonists to become much more angry about at, about the parliament trying to flex its muscles and, um, yeah, maintain its or gain a better grip on the col colonial freedoms. Many colonists began to protest very loudly about this new act. But the Chancellor of the Exchequer, um, who was the author of the Sugar Act, a man named George Grenville, argued about argued in return of their all their complaints that the colonists should help pay the cost of the empire, which actually is not unreasonable since they are gaining the benefit of colonial rule. They should also have to pay for it. Um, the taxes in the colonies were, however, much much lower than the taxes that. British citizens who lived on the British Isles had to pay. Grenville then followed the Sugar Act with the Stamp Act. During the summer and autumn of 1765, the American Revolution uh, reaction, excuse me, to the Stamp Act was extreme and dramatic. The colonists had to pay in hard cash, which none of them really had very much cash, actual cash on hand, um, because it was a time of scarcity. Uh, colonists argued that they had no representation, but that they, because they did not vote in any British elections, 
they did vote for their own assembly representatives, but they were not voting for any representation in Parliament. And it was Parliament that was creating these taxes. So they felt like they were being taxed without representation. The Parliament argued that they had virtual representation. The idea that Parliament members were not necessarily representing the interests of their own specific areas of the nation, but they were representing the nation as a whole. And this did not impress or convince the Americans. They named this um, a fraud, and they wanted actual representation. The Virginia House of Burgesses and the other colonial assemblies denounced the Stamp Act, and they proclaimed that it was no ta they didn't want any taxation without representation. In Massachusetts, Samuel Adams, uh, who was a cousin of John Adams, the future president of one of the future presidents of the United States, and a man named James Otis, along with a whole bunch of other middle class professionals, craftsmen, laborers, etc., created an anti British alliance. They wanted to organize protests in Boston against what they considered to be a tax on their liberty, especially the Stamp Act. These men assembled on August 14, 1765, under what became known as the Liberty Tree, which was an oak tree found in the middle, middle of town. It was here that they built or constructed some effigies, which are um, kind of like mannequin figures of actual people, uh, especially public figures. And they had took these effigies and they strung them up on the tree as if they were hanging them on the gallows. And then they started poking at them with sticks and burning them and vandalizing them. Uh, and then they weren't satisfied with that, but they eventually marched on to one of the British uh, tax collector officials, whose name was Andrew Oliver. And they burnt or they vandalized his office and his home. And this really scared Oliver and his family, and they retreated. And they eventually, within that week, Oliver resigned his commission to be the tax collector, and that was the end of that. But the men, these, these, this group of, this group that was led by Samuel Adams was successful in coercing um, British officials to not do their duty. And this is a this is kind of a scary moment in American history because it means that it could have tipped from being a reasonable and um, positive revolution to being a violent and reactionary revolution like the French Revolution was later on. Many other urban crowds in other parts of the uh, of New England and the the East Coast. Um, began doing using the same tactics on their own tax collectors. Uh, but there was a group who called themselves the Sons of Liberty uh, who were a bit more moderate. They were made up of more upper class and middle class men. And they decided that if they didn't start doing something that things would become out of control. So they grabbed the control um, and they, so that it wouldn't become out of control. Uh, most of these guys were merchants and lawyers and craftsmen, people who had a lot to lose if violence got out of hand. They began, instead of creating mobs, they decided to start sending around petitions and pamphlets. Um, and they decided that mob action should only be as a last resort. It was later on that, that the Stamp Act Congress was called in New York and only nine of the uh, all the colonies were able to attend this Congress. But during this Congress, they passed a resolution that Parliament was not allowed to tax without representation, that that was a valid argument, and that they needed to try to fight for that um, privilege. They also agreed that they were going to boycott, boycott all British imports until this, these taxes were repealed. This idea was called the non-importation movement. The British merchants, who had made a lot of money from their colonial trade, began pressing Parliament to repeal the Stamp Act because it was cutting into their profits. Um, 
they asked the Parliament to repeal the Stamp Act and to reduce duties on the Sugar Sugar Act. But Parliament gave um, the Declaratory Act. Okay, well, the Parliament did retract the Stamp Act and the other acts, but they in instead created one more act called the Declaratory Act. And this was an act which basically stated, we are, re we are recalling all these other acts, or these taxes, but we are still voicing that we have full authority to make the laws and duties for the colonies. So it, instead of solving the problem, it simply postponed it. And most colonists saw right through this, and they and they realized that they were still they still had a fight ahead of them.